Hey guys, this is Professor Abood coming to you live from Rio de Janeiro. And this week we are going to talk about solubility product constants, which is what we're going to be doing in lab this week. So, what does saturated mean? A solution is saturated when essentially the solubility... Oh, well, I'll read you the definition first and then I'll explain it. The solubility of the solute is defined as the maximum concentration of the solute in solution at which the point the solution is saturated. So, um, when we have the maximum amount of salt that we can add to water before the rest of the salt just starts piling up at the bottom, our solution is saturated and we have reached, uh, and that will give you the solubility of the solute in that solution. So, if, uh, for example, you make, if you add sugar to your coffee, you can add as much sugar as you want, but at a certain point it'll stop getting sweeter and the sugar will just start piling up at the bottom of that, um, of your, of your liquid, of your coffee. So, okay, so hopefully you guys are familiar with the KSP values and, um, and essentially know when to use, when to put in, um, the, the, you know, if you should put in the silver, if you should put in the acetate. Um, essentially, if it's not a solid, if it's an aqueous solution, it can go into your solubility product constant. So, what are we going to be doing this week? We're going to be testing how much uh, of of uh, silver, of aqueous silver, you have in your constant in your uh, liquid before it starts falling out. So, what we're going to do is we're going to be mixing some solutions with silver acetate, which is a solid, um, and we're going to have uh, that. That will essentially, when it reaches its saturation point, there will be no more silver and no more acetate allowed in the reaction, or in the in the equilibrium. So, if we add a little bit more acetate, we're going to have to see a decline in silver, and the reason is that because that's going to be shifting the reaction to the left, and this will fall out as a salt. So um, if we add more acetate, you know, th there's going to be less silver. Con conversely, if we add more silver, there's going to be less acetate. Um, and let's remember that this uh, is always a constant, so you can't really change the values of this. So if you add more silver, you have to decrease the acetate, because this is always going to be a constant. Okay, so what are we going to actually do in the lab? We're going to have everyone break into groups A, B, C, and D, and each group is going to mix one of these uh, one of these solutions. So, for example, group C will be mixing a solution of silver acetate with added silver in the form of silver nitrate. Group D will be uh, making or getting together some silver acetate with added acetate. So. What will that do to the silver? Well, we just talked about that, so hopefully you can figure that out. Um, so you're going to start off by by uh, rinsing rinsing your burette with tap. And remember what a burette is? Is it's just that tall um, cylinder? So you're going to rinse your burette. And guys, please keep in mind that the silver solution is very expensive, so don't waste any of it. Um, you're then going to mix the, your solution, whether you're in group A, B, C, or D, um, and you're going to decant the saturated silver acetate solution. What does that mean? That literally just means waiting for the, the, the silver. You're actually going to be able to see a little bit of silver at the bottom, uh, especially for the groups that have added acetate. Um, so a little bit of silver might fall out, so you'll open up your little stopcock to let that silver out, and um, that's how you will remove the excess silver solid. You will then, um, uh, well, and you won't decant it in the burette. You'll decant it with another with another piece of glassware. Um, so then you'll put that solution into your burette, and you will pour the remaining uh, silver acetate solution into your burette and record the level of the silver acetate. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a titration with the silver acetate by adding it to um, a, uh, um, we're going to have an indicator. We're gonna, this is going to be our indicator. And this indicator is toxic, so just you know keep that in mind. 
Uh, it's a carcinogen. It's, it's a, probably going to be at low concentration, but you know, just always make sure to handle chemicals carefully. And the idea of the KCL is to make silver chloride, so the silver will react with the chloride and fall out of solution. And your indicator will then show you when you have reached when you have reached um, uh, your your, the, your target level. So. Essentially what you're going to do is you're just going to titrate it and see when your solution turns from a lemon lemon yellow, here we talk about lemon yellow, to a dirty brown. And at that point you will, you know, record how much, well you, you should be taking recordings uh, and trying to make a little description after every so many milliliters that you add of uh, your silver acetate solution. But, um, so you'll record how much of this titrant you're adding to your solution and your solution will be that KCL um, and that will help you try to figure out the solubility constant and that will be in the calculations and you guys will have to do the calculations on your own um, I can help you with some of them if you're having a lot of trouble but remember I sent out all of the uh, all of the names of the people in, in the groups so you can get in touch with them and you can work together with someone if if two people are still not able to figure it out you, you know you can call a third or a fourth person and see if uh see if you guys can get that the right solution all right so hopefully that helps and once again if you have any questions let me know good luck guys